Yeah. There, there's an Easter egg out there that I haven't seen anyone notice yet. This one is pretty subtle. It's very, very subtle. Sometimes when we put out, you know, maybe like articles or we like make uh, like an infographic or something, a lot of time that's like the, the community team doing that. There is like one small little Easter egg that, that was planted um, that I don't think anyone's picked up on yet. Uh, I if, if once the reveal happens, I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> Hello everyone, the Skilled Roy here, and what you just heard was a clip from our very own Riot Zero Nina, aka Julian, who is our Legends of Runeterra community manager. And you guys know me, anytime a Riot dev mentions the premise of an easter egg, I have to go after it. Last time it was a hint that eventually led to the Bandal City reveal, and I think this one is a few more steps more obscure. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's work through this together. You see, just recently, internet heartthrob Sunny got the awesome opportunity to interview Julian about his role on the Legends of Runeterra team, as well as some of the broader questions about the game itself. Uh, eventually, the topic came up about upcoming content and how hints are handled. So l let me back up. Things like Celestial Impact getting printed like earlier are little Easter eggs that the designers put in. But sometimes when we put out, you know, maybe like articles or we like make uh, like an infographic or something, a lot of time that's like the, the community team doing that. There is like one small little Easter egg that, that was planted um, that I don't think anyone's picked up on yet. Uh, I if, if once the reveal happens, I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> So that's rather interesting. The way Julian speaks about this, the hint we're looking for is not this designer-based one that's inside of the cards, but rather one from an article or an infographic, because those are what the community team works on, which is of course what Julian is a part of. Now, given that Julian is well aware of this hint, we can use his hiring as a basis for the timeline that we're looking for. After all, he seems pretty keenly aware of what the hint is and what team worked on it. This means likely that Julian had a hand in its creation as well. So when did Julian get hired? Um, I'm the global community manager for Lore, and I've been working on Lore for about the past like six months, um, maybe a little bit longer at this point. But um, a lot of the stuff that I guess you've kind of seen, um, I did a, a patch preview live stream with Plink that was super fun. And then I did a lot of like behind the scenes work on Worlds as well this year. So six months, give or take, that means we need to look at every article and infographic posted in the last six months. So immediately, I did that. I began poring over each and every article, reading them for even the slightest reference. Now, previously, a long time ago, they made a small reference to Ivern when they were talking about two trees, but unfortunately, this was long before Julian arrived at Riot. Instead, however, I would like to look towards anything they've talked about in the future of 2023. You see, not too long ago, we got a roadmap that was talking about the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023. Let's see what they have to say about 2023. More LOR exclusive champions, new ways to play, rotation, balance adjustments, and more expansions. But wait. That's, that's a little weird. The rest of the roadmap is all about the Darken saga. There's 13 Darkens to choose from for five panels and they used four Darken. But this card art was chosen? For, so for those of you who don't know, this card art is Mana Soul Student and is presumably the same species that Nico is, uh, a champion from League of Legends. He was introduced in the same set of cards as Annie and has some involvement in her story. His name is Danny. Uh, but all that aside, why would they choose to put a card from four expansions ago to showcase 2023? Why not put a fifth Darken or any card from the Darken Saga, considering that this is the Darken Saga roadmap? This felt immediately odd. So I began digging. Something else interesting began to form. You see, on every other roadmap, the card arts generally correspond to the set or expansion they were talking about. If we look at the 2022 roadmap that we had previously, we can actually see that the parts for Bandle City have Bandle City card art, and then some of the cards for the upcoming Jin cards at the time were there as well. So why are they okay showing upcoming card art for sets back then, but they didn't do it for 2023. Why would they go backwards for expansions? But what if they're not going backwards for expansions? You see, Mana Soul Student has always felt strange to me. It's already a little odd to have such a direct connection with Nico when Nico's story is about her being alone, 
but it gets even weirder. You see, Mana Soul Student has a ton of concept art, and unlike many, many other cards' concept art, Mana Soul Student's concept art is varied in their designs, like dramatically so. If we look at, for example, Treasure Seeker's art, the one drop from Shirima, the initial concept is pretty honed in and focused when you're looking at a lot of their concept art. But Danny? Danny seems to have a ton of variance between each of his various concept designs. It's almost as if they wanted to make sure that Danny was treated a bit more special than the rest of the cards. But why would a random follower be given so much care? And you know, that doesn't even really stop there either. Caleb Yen is the voice actor for Danny and honestly did a fantastic job. There's magic and then there's me. But he's a pretty well accomplished voice actor doing roles in Square Enix's new Tactics game, Triangle Strategy. He also has a role in one of the most popular gacha games out there, Arknights. And he's even the titular character of the Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway anime series. These are the caliber of some of his roles, and yet somehow Mana Soul Student is on his biography and is being held up to that level. No disrespect, but as someone who has voices in Borderlands, Attack on Titan, Fire Force, Rising of the Shield Hero, it's a little odd to focus keenly on a single follower from one champion's associated cards in Riot's card game. Now I know what you guys are thinking. There's a problem with this theory. None of this is concrete evidence. All I have to show you guys right now is just a bunch of conjecture. It just so happens that a bunch of people from the art team, the community team, and the voice actor, all of them seem to value Danny the Mana Soul student well above and beyond what a typical expectation would be for a random follower in Legends of Runeterra. But when Julian, Riot Zero Nina, decides to tell us a hint that no one has talked about, a hint that seems to correspond to an infographic that he himself states have hints inside of them, and he even uses Danny as a profile picture on the Legends of Runeterra forums, it seems like everyone just really likes this random follower from Annie's set of cards from four expansions ago. Or maybe, just maybe, Danny is going to be a lot more than just a random Noxus follower. He might be becoming one of the new Legends of Runeterra exclusive champions, just like he's labeled on the 2023 roadmap. But hey, if I'm wrong, I'll hold that. Now, as always, these theories and research are far from a solo effort. I have the endless support of the people in my Discord who help me find specific clips and background research whenever I'm digging up information. If you would like to join our group of merry speculators and theory crafters, a link to our Discord will be in the description below. And if you like this content and you want to see more, please subscribe and ring the notification bell as it goes a long way to supporting this channel into the future. Thank you once more for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out.